In today's tutorial, we're going to create a 3D maze using the first person shooter view. We're going to have forward and back, left and right. We'll be able to look around the maze with our mouse and use spacebar to jump. So let's get underway in creating a maze and obstacles for people to navigate through. Now the first thing we're going to do is start with a new project. So we're going to click on new. Then we're going to give the project name. We're going to call it Maze Runner. And then we're going to make sure it is a 3D project and click on Create Project. Now once Unity is open, this is the basic layout. You can go up to Window, go to Layout and go down to Revert to Factory Settings and continue. This way we're all working with the same layout. And the very first thing we're going to do is actually bring in an Assets Packet. So we're going to go up to Assets and you can actually go into Import Packages. You can import packages from the store. There are other assets in here as well. We're going to be using the character assets today. So we're just going to click on that. When the character assets open, it's much the same as having a zip file, like a, a compressed file that has all these objects in there. We're just going to import all of them. We're not going to go through and select any of them out at this stage. If you're going to make a project that was for a mobile device or going into production, you may want to strip out the ones you don't use, but I'm just going to import them all at the moment. Now once you've imported the package with all the assets, you'll actually see an assets folder created. And if I click on that, you can actually see the other objects contained within this package. We're going to be mainly concerned with the character one. And also what we would like to look at is the first person character one. Once we've got here, we're going to take the first person characters under prefabs and we're going to drag that up and drop it into our hierarchy. Now you see in our hierarchy we have a main camera, we have a direct light and then we've got the first person controller. So when we run our game now you can actually look around and move your mouse and see. So I can now see the spotlight or the sun. If I push escape I can then get control of my mouse again and then pause it or stop the playhead. You'll also notice there are two cameras. One camera has got to do with our first person controller, which is what we were looking around with before. The other one is the default one that comes with the new projects. So we want to delete that camera. So just right mouse click that and delete. Now we've only got one camera controller. So when I hit play now, you can see I can still look around. The project hasn't been affected by deleting the other camera. Now when I push escape and get control and go to the inspector and click on the first person controller, you can see that the Y axis is dropping. That's because we've actually got an object which has a rigid body and therefore is responding to some gravity and therefore it's falling through the floor at the moment. So what we need to do is create a sort of base for our object so that the camera doesn't fall through because this is gonna be our person. You can sort of see the space at the moment. So what I want to do underneath my hierarchy is right mouse click and go to 3D object. I'm going to put a cube in because I want to make a floor. So I'm going to change its name rather than cube. I'm going to change it to floor. And then I want to give it some properties. So some of the properties I want to do is A, I want to move it below my little character at the moment because you can see that the first person shooter control is there and my cube is there. So let's move him down. Now I can just go up and click on here and move the Y axis there. The X axis is the red and Z is blue and you can see up here that at the moment. So what I want to do is make the Y say minus two. That puts it nicely underneath the object. And then I want to make it bigger. So we're going to start with a scale, say it's X and we'll make that say 20 and then the Y is going to be still one, so it's got depth, otherwise it won't have any mass. And then we're going to go Z, and I'm going to just make that 40. If I zoom back by rolling my mouse wheel, and I'm on a laptop at the moment, so I'm just scrolling back, you can see this is the size of my floor at the moment. If I want to, I can make it bigger, so at the moment it's 40, I could go double that and go to 80. I could also make the X bigger as well and go to 80 and zoom back a little more and you can see this is the size of my floor. What I'm going to do just for simplicity, you'll probably make a bigger floor later. I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller at the moment so I can just manage it. So I'm just going to go back to 10 and 20. That's a nice little size for what I need to do this tutorial with. So what we've done there is actually created an object with our first person shooter controller above. 
So when I hit play now, I've actually landed. If I push spacebar, the controller for jump is already scripted. Also, I can walk forward, right, left, back, and I can still look around. So I can turn myself around and walk forward. I can also walk forward and jump. And once again, I can also fall off the object itself, and you can see it disappearing above me. Push escape to get control, and stop the play again. So what I've done there is created a floor. Well, one of the first things we need to do once we've got a project, I'm just gonna go back to the assets, and I'm gonna create a new folder by right mouse clicking Create Folder. And the first folder I wanna make is called a project. So what I've got is a folder where my standard assets come in and they're ones I've downloaded. This is my project folder. In my project folder, one of the first things I want to do is make some materials. So I'm going to create another one called materials. Then I'm going to double click this. And the very first item I'm going to create within this materials folder is actually a material. Now when we create a material, we can actually change the color of an object by this. So I do have a tutorial on materials and I'll put it in the comments. Um, you can go have a look at that for more detail, but we're just gonna do a simple color for the floor. So I'm just gonna call it floor. I'm gonna basically click the ball here. I can come up to the color picker here and I can go through and pick a color that I want for my floor. So if I'm looking for a grassy sort of color, I can come through and select that. You notice now that the ball's turned green. I pick that up and drop it onto the floor. You can see it changed instantly. If I'm not happy with that color, I can come up and pick a different color if I like. So it's up to you how and what color you would like. I'm gonna pick a, a sort of a green, but a fairly dark green, something like that. So when I hit play now, this is what my floor looks like. It looks like a bit of grass sort of color. Now, once I've done that, I wanna create a maze, so I wanna be able to stop the user from looking around and have to make decisions as they walk through a three-dimensional maze. It's a good idea to plan this out on paper before you build it. So that's just a, a recommendation. So, but how do I put walls in? Well, it's quite simple. A wall is another material or a object again, so a 3D object, and it's gonna be a cube. Now this is actually gonna form a wall. So what I'm gonna do is label the cube as a wall. And as we go along, we'll have more walls because I'm just going to duplicate it. Once the wall is selected, I can come up and select the scale tool, which it already is done. Then I can stretch it up if I like. And I can also adjust the z-axis at the moment. And then I can use the move tool to slide it into position. So I'll just move it out to the edge and then move it back down to the base. So when I run my program now, you can see there is a wall that's present. So what I want to do now is duplicate this wall. So I'm just going to select the wall, right mouse click, duplicate. Now it's called wall one. I can then grab the Z, move it across, and now I've got a second wall. But my only problem is my first person is probably still sitting right in the middle of that. So I can go to the Z plane, and I can move the object back to the start. If I want to turn myself around for the default position, I can also grab that and spin myself around. You see the camera view going out sideways. So I can turn myself around. So I'm facing the opposite direction. So I want to hit play now. I should be standing between two walls and at the start. Now I can't walk through this wall and I can't walk through this wall, but I can still walk off the end here. So what I want to do now is put a wall on the end, and then I've created a basic maze. So to do that, once again, I'm just gonna go back to the hand tool. I'm gonna just duplicate the wall. So I'm gonna pick wall one, right mouse click, duplicate. I'm then going to use this tool to move it away. Then I want to make it smaller. Oh, sorry, I need a scale tool for that. Make it a little smaller. I also want to rotate it, so I'm just going to select this tool here. Select the outer boundary, move it around. 
then I want to slide it into position. Let's move forward just a little bit. So now when the program starts, I should have a wall behind me. So I can't leave that way now. So then I can walk down. And then I've got the options of making the people turn left or right. If I want an object in the way, I could just put a little cube in, which they then have to jump over. So that's how you can make a simple maze. It's up to you to design one now. Make the floor big enough to contain your maze. And then build your maze wall by wall. And then add objects in there so people can work their way through your tricky maze. Hope you found this tutorial useful. Give it a like and subscribe. And have a look around my YouTube channel for other tutorials.